Hudson. You know, hydrogen on demand is getting a lot of attention these days. And why not? Gas prices going up, no end in sight. Have a hurricane in the Gulf Coast, and sometimes we can't even get gas depending on where you live. A lot of people are interested in it. In fact, some of the major car manufacturers like Honda and BMW, they've already got their own versions of hydrogen on demand cars waiting to roll out in a year or two. Now, hydrogen on demand has its promoters, yes, and it has its attractors. Everybody agrees that the technology is a good idea, but does it really work? Well, that's what we're going to find out today. And our test vehicle is going to be this 1997 Ford Explorer. V8, all-wheel drive, SUV. This SUV is a good test vehicle because it gets such cruddy gas mileage. The national average for a V8 uh, Ford Explorer is about 17 miles a gallon on the highway. I have been able to get this one up to around 18, but 17 and a half is pretty standard. So what we're actually looking at is just how much can we improve this gas mileage above that 17 and a half miles per gallon national standard. If it works in this, it certainly ought to work in anything that you've got. There's nothing special about this car except the fact that I've installed an onboard hydrogen on demand system, which I built in my backyard. It took me about four hours to build it, it took about an hour to install it, and I was up and running. Does it really work? Let's find out. Come along with me. Okay, the first thing you have to do if you're going to do a mileage test is get a fresh tank gas, and that's what we're here for. There's a couple things to keep in mind when you're going to be checking your mileage. First of all, find you a gas station that's really close to the road that you're going to be testing on. I'm about a block away from the interstate, so that works for me since I'm going to be testing my highway mileage today. The second thing is, whatever gas station you use to fill up at the beginning of your test, use the same gas station to fill up at the end of your test. The reason for this is because there can be slight variables in the density or the temperature of the gasoline that's coming out of the tanks in the ground. So you just want to eliminate all that as much as possible. If you can, then use the same pump that you used, but the same gas station is probably good enough. There's also a process for when you're actually going to put the gas in the vehicle. You notice that this nozzle, like a lot of them, has a little splash guard here. That's very good. So you just slide it into your tank just far enough to where this impacts the car and so that it's comfortable and that it sits there. And that's how far you want to go. You want to kind of remember that because when you come back, you're going to put the nozzle in about the same distance. Second of all, you raise it up. And I always set the catch on the first notch because that's a pretty steady flow of gas and it doesn't splash and when it gets full you know that your tank is pretty full. The other thing you want to do with your nozzle is that when it cuts off the first time you just want to let it cut off. You don't want to add more gas after that. That gives you a very good indication of where the tank is full and that's also a good indication of where you should stop as you uh, come back and refill it up again. It'll have you putting pretty much the same amount of gas into your tank. And then there's that all-important mileage reading. So before you start, you're going to knock your trip meter back to zero and also take a reading of whatever your mileage is on your odometer. Okay, we're all gassed up, ready to hit the highway. If you're going to do a mileage test, you want to make sure that you don't slow down or change the way that you normally drive. That won't necessarily give you an accurate reflection of what you can expect with a system like this. So drive the way you normally drive. You want to know the truth after all. In my case, I like to get it up to the speed limit, maybe a couple of miles above, pop it on the cruise control and go with it. And that's exactly what I'm doing right here. Okay, here we are back at our starting point with 64.3 miles. Let's see how much gas it takes to fill up this puppy.
right, there you have it, 29.4 miles per gallon. Not bad for a V8 SUV all-wheel drive, is it? Now look, I understand this has not been a scientific test. You could poke all kind of holes in the methodology if you wanted to. But the point is, in my world, hydrogen on demand really works. You should check it out yourself. Don't take my word for it. Go to my website, read what information is there. You know, even if you only get half as good a results as I got, still a no-brainer. But come on, are you going to let Exxon Mobil and, and Ford Motor Company tell you how much you're going to spend for gas? Or are you going to do it yourself? Don't get mad. Get hydrogen on demand.